All right, Jamie, so I got a problem. Can you guess what it might be? <laughs> They're holding some brazing rod there. So I'm going to assume it has something to do okay. with brazing. All right, this is Silfos. This is 15% Silfos that I'm holding. Uh -huh. Now, every time I get online and I, I put a video together brazing, yeah. everybody's always on, on the comment section telling me I'm doing it wrong. Here's the thing. Brazing takes place at a really high temperature, 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Soldering takes place at... 850-ish Fahrenheit and below. Mm -hmm. So there's a real difference. So you really got to heat this material up so it can flow into the joint. Now, when you do that, the reason that we purge with nitrogen right here is because we have to displace the oxygen in the pipe so we don't have oxidization taking place and we build up that cupric oxide, which is those black flakes that can get into the system and plug up dryers, dryers TXVs, TXVs and, stuff, and stuff like that. And you probably know as a manufacturer how many TXVs come back that are perfectly fine and probably plugged up. you got to warranty that, right? Yeah. Especially on larger piping with larger distances and things like that, you're going to get a lot of this copper oxide. And the funny thing you mentioned about plugging TXVs up is a lot of times it happens twice. The reason is, is that when you replace that plug TXV up, now you have full flow again. And that full flow actually scavenges more copper oxide off the sides of the pipe and replugs up the next valve. So again, recommendation, replace your filter dryer, but also maybe move it closer to the TXV as a good recommendation. And you hit the nail on the head, 100% purge with nitrogen. The other part is, if you have a PoE system, which most of them are today, that nitrogen is probably your best friend because it's going to absorb any moisture that might get into the system when it is open, when you have it open. Okay, so this is more important in the summertime, which is you know where we're entering right now. But it'll make your life a lot easier by using nitrogen, 100%. You mentioned you might have to replace that TX valve twice. I've replaced dryers twice, and I know people that have replaced dryers twice because it's plugged, they replace it, and it plugs again instantly. A one and a half cubic inch dryer. So if you, if you don't understand how dryer nomenclature goes, it generally goes three, five, eight, sixteen. Eight and sixteen are the, obviously the, the ones you're going to see mostly in larger refrigeration systems, AC, residential AC, things like that. But once you get into the smaller refrigeration, especially if they have a cap tube, you know you can see there's a cap tube end there. All right, that's designed obviously for cap tubes. If you don't need it, you can cut it off right there. It's a copper connection. But notice it has an access port on here. We originally came up with this design for manufacturers of merchandisers and that who use R290. Well, if you use a standard size dryer, you know, three cubic inch, twice this size, your refrigerant's sitting in here, which means it's not, you know, in the evaporator or condenser doing work. So we came up with this so that they could get rid of those pencil dryers, the loose bead pencil dryers, and go to a solid core. And get, so we added an access port here to it. And if you'll notice, this looks a lot like a standard copper spun dryer with the loose bead fill. I use wet rag putty. Now the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Ambro Controls torch kit. This has a precision torch tip, and I'm gonna use that to test it on this. This is the 3 8 line. I mean, you get some pretty good heat out of this little torch tip, and it's good for reach-ins or anything that's small, cap lines, stuff like that, small valves like this, where you have trouble getting a regular size torch tip in. Really what you're gonna do is you're in a battle against the valve trying to absorb heat away from the joint and how much heat you put on that joint. So lots of concentrated heat. Heat the connection of the valve up first, right? With the torch tip pointed away from the valve. And then once this starts to glow, bring it up onto here to bring the pipe temperature up and then apply your 15 onto there. Let it go all the way around. Make sure you have enough heat to get good flow. You want it up inside of the valve. But make sure when you apply Silfos, it wicks all the way around. If it does that, then it's probably also up inside of here. Jamie wanted to experiment with this torch, which he did on the other side. But now I'm going to go ahead and braise up this side according to Jamie's instructions. So what we're going to try to do is get the heat on there quickly and get it off quickly. But we have our valve protected just in case. And we're going to try to point the torch tip away from the valve get the heat on and get the silphos to penetrate and then try to build a small shoulder out of it. Yeah, and that gets very, very contact in there. Now the heat is right here. So you can see how it starts to flow there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just wipe this down with a rag that's light colored and you're gonna see the flakes that come off of it. So there's the flakes that come off 
the outside. So that's also on the inside. 